Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And in the hotel, we're in a different setting. Rigby's here, can you see him? Oh yeah, you can see him. Rigby's here with me, sorry for the weird lighting and the awkward co camera angle, but all I have is my camera and the sunlight coming, well, it's not really even coming out. But if you're interested in where I'm staying, we doing a vlog at the end of this. So today's just a really quick video. I get a lot of questions or just um, requests from you guys saying, Michelle, all you have to do is just, I just need a meal plan. I just need you to tell me exactly what to eat. Every meal, every part of the day, and what to drink. Tell me exactly what to drink, tell me exactly what to eat, tell me what the snacks are gonna be. I will do exactly what you tell me to do. I don't want to use my brain at all. I just want you to tell me exactly what to do. And I personally think that it's pretty stupid, okay? I just think it's stupid and lazy and you're dumb. I'm just kidding. But you know, um, now that I got your attention with the title and what I just said, because I know a lot of you really want meal plans, let's talk about why I don't like meal plans and I think that they are hurting you instead of helping you in the long run. So I know many of you guys really love meal plans. I know a lot of personal trainers do get a lot of their income from making meal plans and I think that's great. If you are into meal plans, that's your thing. And if you wanna do meal plans, that's also your thing. And if you think they're helpful, then that's, your thing, but this is my thing and this is my channel and so what I say is correct. Just kidding, it's just my opinion and what I've noticed over the years because I was a personal trainer that did complete custom meal plans. Now what you'll find is in a lot of meal plans and I see what people, what other trainers do for meal planning and it's literally something that I could just find on Google and send straight over to a, a client, right? And that happens a lot in the personal training industry and meal plans are not cheap. They are expensive. And a lot of trainers that say they're doing custom meal plans, they'll just get a generic meal plan and send it to you and then charge you up your butthole. Get okay, no, no, no. Up your asshole. It's expensive. So a lot of people are kind of confused when I say I hate doing meal plans. They're like, well, this other trainer just sent me over one, like a whole month meal plan in like a few hours. I got it in one day. What's the big deal, Michelle? Just make me a meal plan. Yeah, I got scanned. When I would do meal plans, it would take me about a week and I would be going back and forth with from client to client asking, do you like this food? What do you normally eat for breakfast? What kind of sauce do you like? What cuts of meat do you like? How, and I would like try to fit, every, like take their, the way that they eat. I would take the way that they eat and then slightly change little things and find substitutes for them so that they could, you know, eat how they normally eat, but in a healthier version or healthier way. So then it's not such a shock because if I make someone who eats completely opposite of me eat like me, it's not pro it's most likely not going to hold. It's gonna be a whole different world. And when you want to create a healthier lifestyle, you create a healthier lifestyle for you. Not my healthy lifestyle, your healthy lifestyle. So custom meal plans took me forever and they cost a lot of money, but even the money wasn't worth it with how much detail I would put into them and how much back and forth I would go from client to client ask like, what do you like? Do you like this food? Do you like that food? Or do you like this sauce? You know, it was just very annoying to be completely honest. Not that I'm saying clients are annoying for wanting meal plans. What I'm saying is the process of asking someone what pleases their taste buds is annoying because it reminds me of being just like a mom and asking like a child, oh, do you like this taste? Or do you like that taste? What do you want for dinner? Oh, you don't like that? Maybe this one? Like, I don't, I, I've told you guys before, I don't wanna be a mom and I don't want to ask grown adult what food they like. You should know what you like and then you do the research to find things that are of substitute. So that's one of the reasons why I do not like meal plans because a lot of it is just back and forth and asking what people like. And in the end, sometimes I wouldn't even get it completely right and they would still have to change their meal plan anyway. You, you know, the whole use their brain to figure out something that they do like. I can't tell you what you like. And even if you do tell me what you like, I st you still might not like it. I'm not gonna know. And you're gonna still do the work anyway to change the meal plan in a way that you want. Which is why in my nutritional program, I give a plethora of just examples. Example meal plans, etc., etc. but I never recommend people to follow it exactly. If you did, you would change everything about what you do right now, right when you start, and most likely quit because I guarantee you don't eat like me. 
use it as an example, look at how I portion out the meals, and then start reading labels. Start reading ingredients. Try to find whole foods that you like. I've had way more success this way for clients losing weight and keeping it off, which is the goal. Y'all can lose weight quick, it's easy. But the trick is keeping it off and not blowing back up or forming a really bad relationship with food. A bigger, more important reason to you, my reason is selfish. Your, my, my next reason is very, um, thinking of the client. So through the years, I would get people that say, you know, tell me exactly what to eat. You'll, I will completely follow it. I will not deter from the program. I will eat exactly what you tell me to the dot. And people will do it and they will lose weight. And then the moment that they get away from the meal plan, like they, they go on vacation or they forget their meal plan. My God, they forget the paper or they don't have their phone or they're in a real life situation where they're just out and about and they have to make a choice for themselves to choose something healthy, to look at a nutritional label, to measure something out on their own. They can't do it. They didn't build the skill to be able to make a healthy choice because they've only been following what a meal plan has said for I don't know how long. They can't use their brain. That skill is not there. And it's a skill that you need to be able to turn this whole eating healthy, saying at an average weight, or if you want to be lean and muscular, you need to be able what are you doing? You're so cute. You need to be able to use that skill to think for yourself when you're in real life situations. You're not always going to have a meal plan and the meal plan isn't always going to fit into your lifestyle. What? You don't like that? You can't shut me up. I'm, I'm gonna tell him. So that's just something I've noticed that a lot of people that they will lose weight following exactly what personal trainers tell them what to eat, but then they don't build the skill to measure, to look at, you know, it's not as, like whenever I go out, it's second nature to just look at the calorie content of something, to look at what a portion size, act, to look at what a portion size actually is, to just, remind myself that I need to know the content of the food just so it gives me a little visual and then I won't overeat, which is what most of your problems, most people, at least in America, we eat too much, we don't, we aren't aware of how much we're eating. And that's something you have to do on your own. A meal plan isn't gonna cover everything in the US or whatever country that you're in. So that's another reason as to why I do not love meal plans. People stick to the meal plan and they don't know how to make their own choices. They don't build that skill. Another reason I don't absolutely love meal plans is that people usually just modify the meal plan they're on their own. So I would take a week to make this complete custom meal plan. I go back and forth with the client. I, I do the research and to try to find, you know, the types of foods that they would like. And then I ask how it's going. They're like, oh, I just ended up changing the whole thing anyway. And it's like, yeah, I got paid, but also I could have saved a week and not stayed at, stared at my computer screen on foods that you would like and then you didn't like anything and you just kind of like tweaked it anyway. You could have literally just wrote down the food that you already eat and then tweaked it yourself for free <laughs> and use the information that I give you in my program to to be able to set your calories and eat at a calorie deficit without me telling you what to eat and you changing it anyway, damn you. Just kidding. But it's just something that's like, do I really need to make you a custom meal plan when you're going to find things, you know, switch things and be like, oh, you're supposed to eat this many calories. Let me look at how much I eat and then I will just eat how I want to eat and I will find substitutes that I that my taste buds will like. Okay, <laughs> yes. what are you doing? So my biggest reason is it's very time consuming for the trainer if you're actually doing a custom meal plan. Two, a lot of people who follow the meal plan and will not deter from the meal plan do not build that skill to be able to make their own choices. And third, it's a waste of money for the client who has the skill at least or the creativity to, I don't know, look at Google that is available to almost everyone, at least if you're in the US to look up things that are good substitutes for foods that you already eat, and then you can make your own meal plan for free. I do think, you know, with the title that I had that some people aren't gonna even watch the video and be offended for absolutely no reason. It, it is a little bit of a sense of laziness when I explain to someone, look, this is what you can do. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. If you want a free meal plan, y'all, Google. Google is very good. And most of you, I, maybe not most of you, I don't know, a lot of you do not have, like a lot of you just want to have a healthy lifestyle, right? You don't want to do keto. You don't want to be a vegan maybe. But a lot of you guys don't have like specific things 
You know, like you don't have a certain disease where you have to, you, know, you can only eat grass. I don't know if that's a real disease, but you know what I'm saying? A lot of you can eat a lot of different types of foods. So once again, Google, they have generic meal plan. Actually, be because social media is such a big thing, they have very good meal plans on the internet that people make that you can look at for free for good examples of how to of how a lot of fit people portion out their meals there's a lot of different options you find one that really relates to you for me i eat about six times a day that's what seems to help me control my binge eating you know eating constantly through the day you find one that fits for you maybe three meals maybe one meal depends on you personally and you said that you get the control so you go to google you find like a, a generic meal plan you look for examples and then you tweak it to go toward your calorie intake you have to still measure your food out because the meal plan on the internet is not going to be specifically for you. So you can take that as an example and start to build your skill on how to portion out your food, on what foods that you like, try a food or try you know a certain meal and then you write down exactly how you feel are you full after or are you not full after if you're not full then that meal is not good for you time to explore and find other meals that are and once you do go through this whole you know trial period of finding foods that you like and don't like and you're building your skill of measurements and you're building your skill of, of, of seeing how much food you're putting into your body and how much food goes with certain portions you will find about like five seven i have about like 10 meals that i just kind of cycle through that i know the calorie constant i still like to count my calories but for people who just want to stop after a few years uh, you'll start to know the calorie constant you'll start to like just know the calories by like oh four ounces of this that is that how many calories that is You'll start to just know, you'll have your, your, your normal cycled meals, and then boom, there's your meal plan. You figured it out on your own for free. You also built your skills, and you also built your skills on how to just look or, or how to walk among the earth and think for yourself. I just personally think that meal plans are such a waste of money for most people. Most of you have the skill to go to Google, look up foods that you like, and then go type into Google, substitute on this, or how to make this lower in calories. It's very easy, that's all I did. I never got a meal, no, I did get a meal plan. I paid for a meal plan, it was very generic. Half cup oatmeal in morning with stevia. Cool, I could have done that myself. Second meal, protein shake with rice cake. Awesome, I guess I, I could have found that on Google. I didn't have to pay for that. Third meal, protein. They didn't even specify. Four ounces of protein with steamed rice and broccoli. Awesome, all I literally have to do to find this meal plan is type in generic bodybuilder meal plan for bikini competitor, and it would have came up most likely. That's what they all eat. It was a generic meal plan that I paid for. Why? It's free on Google, and there is a mass amount of freaking meals, healthy, low calorie meals that you can find on Google. Some people think that I'm mean when I say, no, 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 I think meal plans are just a waste of time and a waste of money to pay someone for when I can't tell you what you like. You've got to find foods that you like. If I followed the meal plan that I got, uh, I would have quit, like I would have done it, but I would have quit, I would be fat. And in my head, I'd be like, so this is what I have to eat to be able to be fit? Gross. Um, I'll just, test holiday, let's roll on into Disneyland. So you can't stop me from saying it. Test holiday, let's roll our fat asses into Disneyland. So that is a very short video of why I do not love meal plans, why I personally don't want to make anybody else a meal plan. The only times that I think meal plans are really, really good when you have a specific type of diet that you need to be on, or you have a specific health issue that you need to be on. And then I don't think you should be finding a personal trainer, you need to find a nutritionist that is specialized in your specific, you know, issue that you're having. And the other times that I think a meal plan is needed is if you are competing and you need to, you know, have like a specific macro count, a specific calorie count, a specific type of food to be able to morph your body into this almighty being that walks on stage for about 20 seconds and then maybe get a plastic trophy and then walk off. Then yes, a meal plan is probably needed, but keep in mind those people that get those meal plans don't follow those meal plans forever. And most people, unless they have some type of ED, gain weight after they're done following their competition meal prep, which is what a lot of normies, the normals, do when they follow a meal plan, which is why I don't like to do meal plans and now you have your answer. That's that. Thank you so much for watching. If you have questions as to 
why I don't do meal plans. I don't know why you would. I, I just answered it. Or if you want to tell me uh, I'm a jerk for not telling you what to eat and trying to save you money, then you can tell me in the comment section. That's fine. And you should also go to my second channel and, and watch all the videos. And watch all the videos on this channel, okay? So I have to go. <laughs> I have to go to a furniture store and see if I can find more furniture because in my house right now I have two, count them two, furniture pieces and I'm trying to make more. Okay. Bye. Say bye, Rigby. <laughs> bye, guys. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Hold up. We ain't done yet. Time for a vlog. Okay, I hope everyone's all right. We're going to my best friend's bridal shower and Rigby is here. Rigby was allowed to go to the party. My best friend is really into her dogs as well. So it was a great socialization experience. He loved it. He got to lick a lot of toes that day. What can I say? My boy is a feet guy. That's the bride to be, Cherry. Yes, I like the fruit. Look at her roll her eyes. We have such a similar personality. Love her. I got her a waffle maker and a little pug card because she also has a pug named Crumbs. And she got me this little best friend forever keychain. It's the best friend forever! Best friend forever! Ring. We played this game where we were supposed to make a wedding dress out of toilet paper. The bridesmaids were in one group and we were supposed to do all of this in three minutes. We lost, like last place. <laughs> Let me see your butt. <laughs> we need like a roll just for that. I know. <laughs> Here's the bride again. She's just so cute. I love her. Friends since freshman year in high school. Her cousin, who I virtually trained years ago and finally met in real life. A chunk of the bridesmaids, but not all of them. Me and Cherry. She literally said, let's do our angry face like we did in high school <laughs> because we hated everything there. I tried to put Rigby in a tiny chair and he wouldn't pose, so we just jumped off to get some more toes. So I stayed at the Rancho Bernardo Inn that night. I've been doing this thing where I just kind of try out hotel rooms for a day. I never really got to spoil myself, and I need to start doing that more. I think we all kind of like find little things to just spoil ourselves a little bit. I tend to just work a lot and worry about the future and worry about my dog dying. So that's not the healthiest thing. I gotta enjoy life. So the hotel was really nice. I never heard of it, and I grew up in this area. They're extremely dog-friendly grass patches everywhere. So at the party, I didn't really eat. I have this thing where I don't like to socialize and eat because then I just eat, eat, and eat, and I don't even get to appreciate the food. So I told myself I can just order something at the hotel, which is something I never do. Plus, I like to just relax and watch cartoons and eat by myself. This is my first room service, and what do I get? A burger, like a fat ass American. It was so good though, but I am a burger girl. I just love any type of burger. Rigby did amazing. I think the only issue I had with the hotel is there wasn't many puppy bags stations outside so when I got him to go to the dog patch at the front there was like no poopy dog bags anywhere but thank goodness I'm always holding poopy bags which I would think there'd be just a lot of poop everywhere because you know people are very lazy but surprisingly I didn't see poop anywhere as expected so I don't know if people are just very responsible or the hotel makes sure to clean it up. So y'all, I didn't even open the windows until the following morning and had no idea the room had its own little freaking backyard. I was walking Rigby down the hall all the way to the front of the hotel to this random grass patch outside when I could have literally opened the damn door. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a nice surprise that I could have utilized and didn't. Anyway, enjoy Rigby doing his little adventure run. Another con that I had about the hotel, this is for my girls that stay sweaty. Um, you can't touch the thermostat. They say it's at 70. Honey, my body knows 70 degrees. The sweat underneath my boobs that I had all night determined that was a damn lie, RBN. Don't you dare lie to me. So I ended up calling because it was getting intense, okay? I don't like to sleep sweaty. And I was like, it's kind of hot in here. So they brought me a fan. So that was nice of them and everything was fine, kind of. It, it was fine, it's fine, it helped. Rigby, where are you? Oh. Okay, don't you go under that bed. Don't you dare go under that bed. Hmm? Where you going? Huh? Where are you going? Hmm? What are you doing over here? I don't trust dogs that go to little corners. <laughs> they also give you a closet. Um, I don't know why you would really need a closet, but I guess it's for people. Oh, there's a fan right here. They didn't even have to walk me up a fan and they walked me up a fan. Do they know that people get like, is it a known fact that people get hot in this hotel room? Cause I don't think this is 70 degrees. I keep my house at 70 and my house is very cold. Ooh, we've got robes. I've always wanted to wear a hotel robe. 
Just, just to be a little bougie. Anyway, I don't, do y'all use the, the hotel closet? I went on a date with a, with a whole ass man a long time ago and we stayed in a hotel room and I've always wondered like, why the fuck do we have like closets, right? Drawers, right? Nobody uses them. And we get into the hotel room and he starts unpacking his luggage and putting his clothes in the drawers in a hotel. We were there for a night because I was competing. Just a why are you got their mini fridge? So if I wanted to bring my meals, I could have. I just didn't have time this time. I like their little this in the shape of a leaf. Pretty cool. And then I'll walk in shower with stone on the ground. I'm still like flabbergasted over the freaking grass patch in the back. I've been taking your little ass all the way in the front for you to just sprint around and just smell everything. So then I needed breakfast and decided to try to get something high in protein so that I can stay full. Girl, ordering room service is fun. Is this how Uber Eats feels? I never used Uber Eats, never got room service. I, I got legs, I can walk, but it was, it was nice just to kind of have someone serve me. So I got the steak and eggs. It comes with a side of potatoes and those are drenched in oil or butter or something. But the meat was great and so were the potatoes that I had. I wanted to taste this since I didn't freaking pay for it. They were good, but you know, very oily. But my fat ass loves oily. It's clearly not low in calories. Don't y'all think just cause something is high in protein doesn't mean it's low in calories. Everything was definitely prepped in a lot of oil or butter. But the goal for this meal was to keep me full while I furniture shop for the new home. So. Let's get ready, girls. First on our list is a place called Hold It Contemporary Home, which is exactly the type of look that I'm going for. Super modern, super sleek, tight pieces. But when I got there, I said, oh, Shit, I have Rigby, but I was standing outside and one of the workers were like, I hope you're bringing him inside. And I was like, am I allowed? And they were like, yes, bring him in. So that was nice. Rigby does really good and he's quiet and everyone was very excited to meet him. There you go, look at that. You're so good and smart. <laughs> I ended up finding a dining room set for the house, which you will see in my furnished home tour. If you want to see an empty home tour, I linked it below. But now it's time for me and Rigby's adventure to come to an end and head back home. And you know what? I was there for hours and I didn't get hungry. And my home is an hour away from this place. So the protein meal really helped. I didn't get home until about 4.35 ish. So I accomplished the goal with that meal. I made a great choice. And the other dogs obviously didn't miss us at all. Oh, my baby boy, Butterbee. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and spending time with me. If you would like more vlogs, they will be on my second channel with just the vlogs rather than the commentary in the beginning. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys next time.